Hello dear students, your Sovereign Sir is back once again with a new topic, with a new interesting aspect of formation of a molecule using the MO diagrams. Here this time we are going to deal with the nitrogen molecule. Not only that, in addition we will also calculate the bond order and as well as we will try to find its magnetic property. Now just to save a bit of time, I have already formulated a table as you can see over here. I want to form nitrogen molecule. So what I have to do, I have to take two nitrogen atoms. I have taken them on the left hand side and the right hand side, considering them as the atomic orbitals as you can see over here. In the center, we will formulate both the nitrogen atoms to form nitrogen molecule. So it's a molecule formation. So the uh, nomenclature given as molecular orbital. So you can see in all we have got three columns. On extremes we have atomic orbitals, in the center we have molecular orbitals. Now as far as the nitrogen atom concerned, we know its atomic number is 7. The electrons 7 are filled in the orbitals as 1s orbital containing 2, 2s orbital containing 2 and 2p orbital containing 3 electrons. So that is what we have shown over here in both the atomic orbitals. 1s containing 2, 2s containing 2, 2p, x, y, z containing 1, 1, 1 each. Same thing on the right hand side, 1s2, 2s2, 2p, x, y and z. Okay, that is a simple than the basic thing. Now we come to the formation of the nitrogen molecule. As far as the theoretical values concerned, we know that every orbital has got two energy levels. One is the lower energy orbital and one is the higher energy orbital. The lower energy orbital as per the theoretical values we name it as bonding molecular orbital. The higher energy orbital is termed as anti-bonding molecular orbital. We have written them as BMO and ABMO respectively for every, every orbital that is 1s, 2s and 2p. For 1s and 2s they are denoted as sigma 1s and the anti-bonding is denoted as sigma star 2s that is the simplification. For 2s also it is sigma 2s and sigma star 2s. So for s orbitals as it is spherical in nature there arises no complicated question. But then comes the p orbital. p orbital as you know it is dumbbell in shape and there are three sub orbitals as x, y and z. The theoretical values have confirmed that x and y, px and py orbital energy is somewhat different than the pz orbital energy because of the overlapping on the bond axis with respect to the 180 degree rotation. On that basis, you can see over here, I have denoted the three orbitals in the BMO section for 2p as pi 2px and pi 2py. They have got quite similar energy compared to the 2pz orbital and you know the overlapping values has denoted it with sigma. So there are three particular suborbitals with two different de designations. One I repeat pi 2px and pi 2py and then we have sigma 2pz. Similarly for anti-bonding always when we try to denote for anti-bonding we place an asterisk or a star. So this is pi star 2px pi star 2py and then comes sigma star 2pz. So this is what I have already formulated the table. Now we will fill up the electrons and try to see that the molecule is formed. Let's see. This is 1s orbital. It has got two electrons. Fine. One electron. Now see, before filling up of electron, I would like to clarify one thing. We always need to realize three laws or principles or you can consider them as the rules. Pauli's exclusion principle, Aubau and Hunt's maximum multiplicity rule. According to these three rules, as we are clear, we will simultaneously utilize these three rules to fill up the electrons forming molecular orbital over here. Let's see. This is one electron. I want to fill up and see that nitrogen molecule is formed. So what I'll do? First of all, I take one electron from this 1s orbital of nitrogen atom and then according to Pauli, Aubau and Hunt, I will fill up the electron in the lower energy orbital. That is there. From the other nitrogen atom, one electron again according to Pauli, Aubau and Hunt gets paired up with the earlier electron from this nitrogen atom. Right? Okay. Now we are left with one more electron. 
that electron has no vacancy left because an orbital can maximum accommodate two electrons which we have accommodated so the electron over here has to has to get into the higher energy orbital over here same thing will happen for the another nitrogen atom which has got one electron in the and total two but one is left in the 1s orbital so that will pair up with the earlier electron which was filled so now you can see these are the two electrons for this nitrogen atom these are the two electrons for this nitrogen atom in all you can see they are four in number we have filled up all the four according to Pauli, Aubau and Hunt rule we proceed further for 2s orbital again the same concept one electron from 2s gets filled up in sigma 2s the lower energy level now it's the turn for the another nitrogen atom one electron from 2s gets filled up again in sigma 2s orbital and that forms a pair you can see now the other electron of the 2s orbital wants to get filled up but it cannot because an orbital can accommodate maximum two electrons fine so it has to jump to the higher energy that is it gets filled up in the sigma star 2s orbital same thing happens with the 2s orbital over here it gets filled up or gets paired up with the previous electron in the same sigma star 2s orbital so again you can see we have got two and two four electrons and we are filling up those four electrons over here now very 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 interesting and sensitive thing is that we have to fill up the three suborbitals px py pz yes of course the funda of the three rules we have to apply them simultaneously remains the same let's see I'll fill up one electron, I'll take one electron from the 2px, right, and try to fill up in these three uh, possible orbitals. Now, we have got all the three choices to fill up this electron, but we need to keep th these three rules in mind, and according to the rules, the lower energy gets orbital, orbital gets filled up first, one, second, once it is getting filled up or completely fills up, only then and then the electron goes to the higher energy. But what Hunt's multiplicity says that yes, when the orbitals have equal energy, the electron will try to remain unpaired as far as possible. So we'll keep all the three rules in mind. According to the rules, we'll first fill up this electron and that electron has two probabilities. One, either it gets into 2px or two, either it gets into 2py. So you can fill up either in 2px or 2py. Suppose I fill up in 2px, right? Okay. Now it's the turn for this nitrogen 2px orbital. Be careful. I want to fill up this electron. Now you can not consider the simplicity of filling as we did earlier that will try to pair up. Why? Because here pi 2px and pi 2py they have got the same energy. So according to Hund rule the electron will try to remain unpaired. So here, here you have to see that this electron of the 2px orbital is protocolically, deliberately, you can say compulsorily has to get filled up in the pi 2py orbital. There is no other alternative. If it was the first electron, then it had two options. But now, if this is already filled, it has to get filled in the one which is vacant orbital, right? Now we come to pi 2py of this. This electron, again, according to Pauli Aubau Hunt, electron will get paired up. Now lower energy, these two are the lowest. So electron, this electron has got two options. Either with this or with this, it can pair up. Let us pair up with this electron fine which is already there then for the pi 2 py of this now it has to it has to get paired up with the one which is unpaired so the electron i'll place over here now we are left with one electron from the pi 2 p z orbital right now there is no option left because an orbital can accommodate maximum two and we have already occupied two so the vacant orbital is sigma 2p z so we are definitely going to occupy the electron over here and this 2p z also we are going to occupy over here so this is how the whole scenario is for filling up of the electrons now see this is we have formed the formation 
as you can see three electrons for this nitrogen and three electrons for this nitrogen the 2p orbital are existing total six we have filled up those six electrons over here so total seven twos are 14 electrons are filled and nitrogen molecule is formed now how it is formed that is we will calculate the bond order only then we can understand let's see how we can calculate bond order for calculation of bond order we need to know the number of electrons present in bonding molecular orbital of the molecule. What is bonding molecular orbital? As I said earlier, the lower energy orbitals. Over here we have 2. For the 2s we have again 2. And for 2p we have 2 plus 2 plus 2. So 2 plus 2, 4 plus 2, 6 plus 2, 8 plus 2, 10. So we have 10 electrons filled up in the bonding molecular orbital. In addition, we have 2 plus 2 and nothing in the antibonding over here. So we have total 4 electrons filled up in antibonding orbital. So we'll subtract those 4 electrons from the previous 10. And as there are 2 energy levels for every such orbitals, we'll divide it by 2. So that comes to 6 by 2 and that is equal to 3. That means the bond order for nitrogen molecule is 3. It implies that if I show two nitrogen atoms between the two nitrogen atoms, I'll form a triple bond. So this is formation of bond order between the atoms by forming a molecule. So this is N2 molecule and that implies that between the two nitrogen atoms, there are or uh, you can say there is a triple bond. Okay. In addition, we'll also learn to find the magnetic property. Now see, you can see every orbital is containing two, two electrons each. Fine. So according to that, you can see there is no unpaired electron. There is no single electron. There is no unpaired electron. Now when all the electrons are paired, the magnetic property is considered to be diamagnetic. And thus I would say that nitrogen molecule is diamagnetic in nature with the same concept you can calculate the bond order and magnetic property of any molecule you can consider fluorine molecule you can consider oxygen molecule hydrogen nitrogen we have already done any damn molecule you can form and that will be the accurate formation in the next episode Definitely we are going to take the oxygen molecule. Why? Because according to the previous theory, valence bond theory, oxygen molecule is considered to be diamagnetic. But the practical and the experimental basis have confirmed that oxygen molecule is paramagnetic. And this theory will give us the clear idea that yes, oxygen molecule is paramagnetic in nature. But of course, before getting on to the next episode you all prepare all these particular uh, what do you say the applications very clearly come prepared for next episode which will be released soon till then take care do take care of yourself obviously and prepare the uh, concept very well thank you so very much